Moving on. I don't think we want to. You know, I said Quake 3 the other day when we were talking about the Doom 3 thing. You you already covered this. That's. I, I don't think we need to go into that. Um, this is worth going into only because we haven't yet. Um, are you still wanting to give? You're a GNOME person, right? Not a KDE person? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As a GNOME knight, are you giving GNOME 3 and its derivative Unity... You, do you have faith that they're going to mature? Or are you honestly leaning towards, at this point, no, they're not ready yet, I don't want to touch them? Uh, well, I'm sitting on GNOME 3 right now, but it's in fallback mode. It's only in fallback mode, though, because I run dual monitors with proprietary NVIDIA drivers, and those have a ton of tearing if you use the, uh, the traditional GNOME shell. Personally, I like GNOME shell, and I like how you can extend it with the, uh, the extensions. You can have different menus, and you can have, remove things you don't like. You can change the whole theme. You can have a theme manager that's uh, very easy to interact with. You can have docs on the desktop. I mean... Like Linus said, it does feel like they've kind of crippled it and taken away a lot of the functionality, but it is easily added back in through the uh, extensions. What I think is honestly missing is a centralized uh, extension manager and repository of extensions that really should be bundled into uh, GNOME proper, something where these are you know, tested, used, approved by the GNOME Foundation, I guess. So you need like uh, basically a GNOME three app store or something like like what yeah, like what yeah, Mozilla exactly. has for its plugins. This is the official Mozilla recognized plugins. You need that for GNOME three to yeah. So yeah, something where you just open up a little app, you hit a button, it downloads it to your system, installs it, uh, tells you if you need to restart the uh, the interface or not. Because the, there are a lot of them out there that you know you could actually even package them together like the GNOME two pack something to add back the applications and places menu and uh, give you the bottom bar again and whatever else. Because the, there are, like I said, there are a ton of them out there that when packaged properly together, you can have an experience that is comfortable and familiar. Okay, so I, I was unaware that that actually existed. I, I didn't realize that those plugins had gotten that developed yet, where they had... Oh yeah, there's, okay. there's quite a few out there. So the utilitarian nature can be restored, it's just you have to know what exists and know where to find it and, and so on. It, yep. isn't, it hasn't been organized yet. Yeah. Then that well, and that's the last time I looked, which has been over a month ago. I mean, it's probably been every bit of two months ago since I looked. Well, okay, based on all the bitching everybody's done for the last 30 days, I'm pretty sure they haven't added that app place yet. <laughs> it's like they're good. Okay. And it could just be that we're, they're waiting for somebody to write it. Okay, uh, it, I, I think somebody needs to put an open bounty then up there for for GNOME three. It's like let, let's put the GNOME three um, a, a plugin manager, please. We need it desperately. It's this little uh, must have feature. <laughs> well, and the problem is it would take the the GNOME Foundation actually stepping up and saying we're going to provide the server space for this. We're going to allow users to submit them. We're going to have to go through a vetting process for them. I mean, it's just a whole other ball of wax that's going to take people being devoted to it and managing and maintaining it. And it could be community managed and maintained, just like the AUR for Arch. But you run into that problem of who, what if someone submits something to it maliciously and it, you know, everyone tries it because it's the next big hot thing and it kills everybody's uh, GNOME show. It's as simple as going into the extensions and removing it, but I don't know. Well, I mean... It's a ball of wax, we'll put it that way. Yeah, it's well, it's like, I mean, even... It, 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 the reality is, if you're going to strip something down like they've done with GNOME 3, then you have to have that ability to strip it back up. You know, it's... Five I think that's the whole point behind it, is they strip it down to the bare metal, the bare essentials, what they consider to be essentials, and uh, that's where the whole extension system comes in. And I think there are so many people that haven't tried it yet or don't realize it even exists that it's just simple JavaScript, CSS, and a little bit of HTML combined together in the right way to make your whole desktop experience change. Because well, I actually went through and I wrote an extension a little while back to remove the uh, accessibility options because I don't need them personally. 
and or I, I think I copy and pasted some of these honestly, but still, just going in and, mm -hmm. and seeing all the code that they put in there um, wasn't difficult to use, wasn't difficult to, to change. Um, even adding the dock to the desktop, I didn't want it on this side, and I wanted it over on the other side, so I modified the CSS to move it from one side to the other and flip it around. I don't even think I had to flip it around, just moved it, and it was less than three minutes worth of work. On uh, CSS and HTML are pretty simple language you can do, it, but you can do a lot with them. You know, that brings up another thing. With both GNOME and Windows fixing to build their new framework thing, it, what GNOME already has and Windows 8 is supposed to do is too, you know, they're building it, like you say, on JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, it, do we think we're going to see, you know, like GNOME plugins uh, porting over to Windows and vice versa? Because they're written in one of the most open languages there is, that which drives the internet. Uh, if you start writing your plugins and your widgets and your thing for your desktop environment in that, it's just copy paste to pull them over from platform to platform. But do we think yeah. that's going to happen, or is side of it? As long as there is some element of open source to the Windows side of it, and as long as they don't go far out of their way to make the naming and the formatting difficult, uh, going back and forth between platforms should be fairly simple. It's just a matter of uh, adapting it from one to the other, and in a lot of ways that could probably be something that you could script. Um, well, and, and even if Microsoft goes in there and tries to proprietize the heck out of HTML, it's yeah. still HTML, which means you could create an emulation over on the Linux side that goes, okay, this non-standard HTML call does the same thing over here it does on the Windows side. You know, yeah. it, if it says this, do this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, it's, I mean, that, that would be an interesting thing, because uh, basically... Right, especially if Microsoft were to provide a large library of open source, uh, well, a large open library of uh, widgets, applications, whatever else you wanted to call I, them. I don't think they're going to... I don't think they're going to provide theirs. However, you know, uh, it, one of the few things that, cost, that continually loses in the patent wars is uh, web page design. You know, I, I cannot go create a theme for a website and patent or copyright it. I just can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I, 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 I could waste all the money, but I'm going to lose for the first time somebody challenges it. So it's, it really is just a complete waste of time, effort, and energy. Um, and based on all the press things Microsoft's been giving, they actually want all third-party developers to write in this, which means pretty much anybody who wants to port it could. Uh, or you could just download the Windows one and run it. You know, that's, That would be an interesting world to see. I'm surprised to see that that may be what's not. But, no, I did not realize GNOME 3 was working on plugins and they, they were writing them the same way Microsoft's wanting theirs run. Uh, that that's going to well, be. That's the funny thing. It's it's kind of funny that it hasn't happened up to this point. I think honestly, it took a lot of the the browsers maturing and the JavaScript engines maturing to make it happen. Because now that you can do so much with CSS and with JavaScript and with HTML, uh, it, well, I, I don't know if I'd said that before or not, but you can, in a lot of ways, with just JavaScript and CSS, replace Flash applications. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, uh, that's uh, yeah. how HTML5 is really propagating. It can do a lot. Of that, things that's what it's trying to flash. propagate. As somebody who has been trying to write Flash replacements using only JavaScript and CSS, I will tell you the system requirements are a little more stoked than we want them to be. Um, it, it, it's, it depends on what you're doing, I guess. Uh, yeah, but. but I mean, for, for the traditional desktop type stuff, the menus especially. Menus would be very simple to do in CSS and Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Or just CSS. Uh, yeah, me menus basically you you just uh, but use uh, jQuery and CSS and you're good to go. That's <laughs> you have everything. Or you just need. use CSS. Uh, it's definitely doable. CSS will give you the menus, but to get the animation effects that people are used to having, you need the JavaScript. 
you cannot do those animations purely with CSS. Uh, but Which you know. is why it's, it's nice that they, they are going to have both of those available. And, I mean, in a lot of ways, it, I guess the biggest thing for me about all this is it makes it that much easier for the end user to become involved with open source. You know, to, to be able to say, I created a theme for this. I uh, created this extension for GNOME Shell. I, you know, and all I know is, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, web languages. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just really hoping that we don't wind up with the same thing we wind up with the internet where somebody changes one hex key in the CSS so that the blue is now pink. Oh, it's a new one! I'm like, no, it's not a new one! You just changed one color! It's a new one! It's pink! It's on! Like, no, it's not! It's, 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 anybody can do that! Yeah. All right. Well, I may have to reevaluate GNOME then, son, if they have that, because then they have. But if 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 I only had a single monitor, or if I were using Intel or ATI or something else, I would be using GNOME Shell right now, and I would be fairly happy with it. I think. Well, let's. Uh, I mean, I've tried it on one monitor. I had it on my laptop for a while, and it was perfectly fine. I've got it on my desktop, my second desktop at work, and I use it all the time. It's. No problem. Well, no, it's like, and you're you're getting into something there that uh, is actually this is one of the things what we should go into. It we're this close to ATI being the preferred graphics card for Linux. We, we're like that close because some of the I, things. I noticed over the years they kind of go back and forth. Yeah. Uh, ATI though, in, in the past, has never it's never been the prolific one in my experience. It's, it's well, that's because kind of they keep writing every time they come out with a new card. It's a whole new set of drivers. It's a whole new everything. It's any, uh, but NVIDIA seems to be getting away what uh, enthusiasts have loved about them, which is one driver, please. You know, it's I, I don't know why they're wanting to get away from that, why they're wanting to create these overly proprietary, continually changing drivers. It's Is it a limitation of the hardware they're changing over to, or is it just... Because they don't think they need to stay fast to their roots. Uh, I think a part of it, uh, well, I don't know. I think I missed part of the question there, but uh, as far as why NVIDIA is pruning back their drivers? Yeah. Uh, it could just be that the uh, having all the old stuff in there is it's keeping them from making advancements. That The newer cards can support the things that older ones can't. So they're, they're having to write that all in one driver that doesn't really support everything that it could possibly support, I guess. Well, but it's... I, I wouldn't have a problem with that if they would, you know, make it an open core nature and make it so that if they don't want to take the time to write the open uh, equivalent counterpart, others can do it for them. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it, it, they're not... They're not working like they used to to allow that to happen. It's almost like they don't care anymore, or they think it's not part of their business. I mean, it, it's. I think they kind of underestimate how many people were buying their cards for those reasons. Yeah. Well, and how many people are, are working on actually developing for them from the open side? I mean, the, the open source, the NVIDIA drivers have significantly improved over the last two years. Possibly even more than that, but I mean, significant improvement over the last two years in that uh, performance differences between them. It's it's still a large gap, but it's a much smaller gap than it used to be. Well, and you would think they'd want to help that increase rather than slow it down. Or perhaps they're delaying so that the uh, the open source drivers expand, and uh, maybe maybe they can just stop developing for Linux entirely. I hate to even think of that, but that's entirely possible. That, I don't think they want to go that route. <laughs> I mean, think about it. If you can get the community to just take over and do the work for you, although you'd think if that were the case, if they honestly wanted the community to take over... If they, they wanted the community to do that, why are they not just giving you know the core yeah, packs necessary the to the kernel to work on and just have it be there in the kernel where... You don't need their proprietary driver or any of that. It just works, damn it. You know, if that's really what they wanted, you know, go to the Linux group, say, 
here's the code you need. Have fun. <laughs> it's like, it, they would do it. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Maybe someday down the road, but more of the uh, hardware vendors will step up and say, you know, we're really spending a whole lot of money to make these drivers. How about you guys help us out? Open. Okay. Uh, most of uh, Actually, uh, completely tangent there, uh, the game Zero AD. It's been in development for like 11 years now. It's, the, it's, it's the new time. Duke Nukem Forever, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but they open sourced it about a year, year and a half ago, and it has made significant progress and actually has a playable version out now, just within the last year, year and a half. And I've, I've spoken to a couple of developers. They're, they're really nice guys. They're doing a lot of hard work, and they have made a, a very amazing uh, RTS game that is still growing, changing every day. But uh, how long did they go making no progress... And, and the open source model has basically saved it for them. Well, no, I see that to me. That's one of the real strengths about the open source model, Re regardless of what type of anything you're doing in development. It, it, rather, you're doing high end, high level programming, or just simple script crap, which doesn't really count as programming or something. You hit a bottleneck eventually, where all the eyeballs that have looked at it forever cannot they, they cannot go forward from here and that's one of the great things about open source is there's always another set of eyeballs to keep things moving forward and there always will be and it just it keeps any code fatigue any um, I just can't figure out how to solve this from here you're like oh no we, we did that last night didn't you see that <laughs> it's like uh, it, it uh, which is why it open tends to develop at the rate it does. You know, it, it's able to, like you say, in a year cover what some things can't cover in ten, uh, because of that almost communal nature to it, and that's the great thing for it. 